Hello, once again, this is Pastor Stephen Darby. I want to talk to you today uh, about uh, a real subject, and this is the main problem in the body of Christ by far. I mean, I don't, I don't care what uh, uh, what, are the, what what problems are going on, even in the world. The problem, this is the main problem, and I want to get to that today. Uh, I want to take you to Ezekiel chapter 34, because the Bible talks about woe unto the shepherds. The shepherds, the, the, the people that lead the flocks of God, the flock of God are responsible to educate, enlighten, and to give the people a correct unbiblical understanding of where God's heart is on the views, whether they be political or not. Um, we see now in our modern day Christianity, uh, the, 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 the shepherds, the ones that are uh, celebrity or the ones that you see all the time or the ones that are on have the big ministries or whatever. They, they don't they deal with no issues. Usually that's controversial. No issues that will cause them to have to take a stand. No issues that go against Hollywood. No issues that, uh, uh, you know, issues like abortion or issues like uh, 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 homosexuality or any other issue that's political. They don't deal with it. And one of the reasons that we must understand is that um, uh, most of you all who don't know, uh, uh, most leaders know this, but most uh, laymen and uh, 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 members of churches don't know that most churches are 501c3. The 501c3 is the IRS code that regulates churches, and uh, it's it's a tax. It's a it's it's the IRS taxing program. Uh, what it means is that churches can, by them being nonprofit, can be exempt from taxes. But that was put in place by, um, I believe, FDR, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and but the goal really was to silence churches because. I think one of the first lines of the 501c3 tax code is you shall not uh, uh, churches cannot in, involve in uh, involve themselves in political in politics or or endorse any political party or basically have no comment on uh, the things of the of, of the things of the world going on around them. Uh, uh, basically, churches can't take a stand on on a political view or endorse a political candidate. And uh, what it means is it was a way to silence the church and the IRS holds that over the church's head by saying, if you uh, if you uh, endorse or get involved in politics, then we're going to revoke your IRS tax exempt status. So basically, preachers are uh, literally um, uh, selling out to get a tax break. That's what this is about. Churches are, are keeping the people misinformed because they're afraid that they'll have to pay taxes on money. This is what this is boiling down to. Now, you must understand a church that's small, that doesn't have a lot of revenue, they usually are not as concerned because they don't have a lot to lose. This is the reason why Jesus told his disciples, when you go to preach, don't take nothing with you. Take no, no extra coat or cloak or nothing. Why? Because he didn't want them to get caught up in provision he's he, he wanted them to know god will provide for you because when you begin to build a ministry and have a lot to lose and take a lot with you and start building you it's going to be easier for you to compromise to keep your empire versus telling the truth because telling the truth many times as you see with prophets in the bible like uh john the baptist and even isaiah that you lose it all Telling the truth will literally cause you to lose it all. So the way these preachers are protecting themselves is they stay away from all. If you want to know why nobody is speaking out on controversial issues, issues of politics, even talking about the president or anything that has anything to do with him, it's because they're 501c3 and 501c3 does not allow you uh, 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 legally to have tax exempt. Now, preachers who don't have a lot of revenue, we have nothing to tax most of the time. Most of the preachers don't, don't, don't care. But when you have mega ministries, millions and millions and millions of dollars are coming in. Uh, uh, that's a lot of money. And so this is one of the reasons why they stay away from it. But this is how Satan has been crafty to silence the, the, the prophetic voice in the body of Christ from, from speaking out to inform the people. The Bible says, uh, even in the book of Ezekiel, I believe that when the sword is on, when, 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 when you as a shepherd, as a watchman, when you see the sword upon the land, your job is to warn the people. If you want the people, then the blood will be upon their their own head or their own hands. But if you fail to warn the people when the sword is upon the land, then the blood will be upon your hands. So most most of these preachers have now blood upon their hands because they're failing to warn the people. So let me get to this scripture that I want to share with you today. It's in Ezekiel chapter 24. 
And uh, it says, verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. In other words, God said, I'm going to deal with those who are leading the flock because it is the shepherds that cause the people to be led astray. And it says, Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. You need to study this. Look at verse 2. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that feed themselves. Why are they not informing the people? Why are they not preparing the people, maturing the people, edifying, growing the people up into maturity instead of having them running around the country for spiritual calisthenics and 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 and, and giving them a lot of fluff and a lot of uh, organ music and the shouting and dancing, but they're not maturing the people. So that's why the people live helter skelter un un um. They live unstable lives because they're not being matured. Why? Because the shepherds are feeding themselves. This is the whole goal behind books, all these book deals. And uh, now you can't even watch Christian TV without them asking you for uh, the Lord told me uh, I got a fifty two dollar blessing and send fifty two dollars for fifty two weeks and uh, one oh five blessing and all of this stuff. And you can't even watch ministry. You can't even hear the word of God without being solicited uh, in some type of scheme to that causes the shepherds to feed themselves more, you know, and so uh, it says, um, it says, should not the flocks, I mean, should not the shepherds, I mean, I mean, should, should not the shepherds feed the flocks? So uh, Isaiah chapter 2, 30, I mean, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 2 is saying, in that verse is, the shepherds are, the job of the shepherds is supposed to be feeding the flocks. Now, to feed is just the same way you do with your own child. You know that you can't feed your child milk every day. You can't feed them bread only. You can't feed them even meat. You can't feed them that always. They have to have green vegetables. They have to have fruits. They have to have some sugars. They have to have different. There, there's a variety. Uh, uh, there, there's a, there is a variety of food that, that, that causes a person to get proper nutrition. Well, basically... When the, 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 the because the shepherds are not feeding the flocks, they're feeding them one type of meal. Uh, uh, in, in other words, they're feeding them one portion of meal, or one type of meal. So the people, so let's say it like this: What if a person only eats sugar? Well, they're going to develop diabetes. That's what we have in the body of Christ. We have spiritual diabetes because the shepherds are only feeding them one meal: the the lushy, the sweet, the sweet, uh, the sweet, dainty. Uh, morsels is what they're eating, so they have no. Uh, so they're so they're literally a uh, 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 nutrient deficient, spiritually deficient, because they're not getting the other parts. Because the shepherds are only feeding the one meal. Because if they feed them the other parts, the people will grow up and no longer support. It's not that the people won't support the shepherds, but they'll grow up and they won't be easily manipulated. The shepherds won't have to run the risk at being at, at really preaching. A, a word that causes him maybe to get in trouble with the government or to get in trouble uh, uh, um, or, or to get in trouble with his board because so it so the best thing they do is to keep the people young and to keep the people immature by constantly feeding them with uh, uh, brownies and donuts and cake and cookies and sweet drinks. Well, that's what uh, if, if, you've, if you've ever seen the scenario where a child, he goes out, he falls down, skins his knee. And, the, and when he comes in, the mother offers him something sweet. Uh, a child uh, 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 hurts himself. The mother offers him something sweet, uh, you know, constantly reward, uh, always giving him something uh, 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 sugary to call, to, to, you know, to kind of pacify. That's a better word uh, to pacify him. Uh, uh, in his immaturity and that's what they're doing with this type of ministry that's the reason why the, sh the, sh the saints now are so immature because they've only eaten this sugary mix of watered down sugary mix of 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 of, of, of gospel that uh now they can't even discern between wrong and right which is the bible says the real sign of maturity is being able to is a person has to be able to uh uh um uh, being able to discern between good and evil. So now the saints can't discern because everything they've been fed only feeds the weakness and the immaturity in them and the strong and, and the other nutrients, spiritual nutrients that they need to grow, they're not getting. Therefore, they can't discern. So that's why we have such a lack of judgment. Now, listen, verse three says, ye eat the fat and ye clothe and ye clothe you with the war. Ye kill them that are fed but ye feed not the flock. Think about that. 
Think about it. That's what it's saying. You eating the you eating the best parts. You you enjoying the best parts of the sheep. You getting everything the sheep are providing. They're giving you everything, but you're not feeding them. You're not feeding them. You literally, in other words, the sheep are starving while the shepherds are eating. The sheep are starving. This is one of the reasons why, you know, people are coming from all over the place looking, uh, 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 you know, calling and looking for um, they're looking for strong ministry. And some of these people are leaving, leaving these mega churches, leaving some of these uh, uh, dumbed down institutions of spirituality. They're leaving them for uh, because they're hungry. You know, and, and one and this is the reason why most and most of these pastors now get offended when the sheep begin to talk about they're hungry. They know there's more. They want more. And the pastor makes them feel like they're being super deep. This is the title you'll get if you decide that you want more of God. They'll label you as super deep or super spiritual uh, because the pastor, it's not it's not it's not it's not beneficial for the pastor that the sheep be deep, because if the sheep be deep. The sheep are going to not need the books, the tapes, the counseling. They're not going to need all of those things. Therefore, they're going to begin to even get revelation and see and even question some of the pastor's own teachings. So this is the reason why it, they don't want the prophetic voice. They don't really like the prophetic voice in these type of in this type of uh, 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 modern ministry. They like the in, they like the intellectual sit down and te let me let me tell you what to believe and teach you. Uh, but they don't like the demonstrations of the spirit. The Bible says that what we're preaching is not an excellency of speech, but in demonstration of the power of God. So your faith won't rest in men. See, when the power of God is not demonstrated, when you don't see the prophetic, when you don't see demons cast out, when you don't see healings and miracles, then you know that the people's faith is resting in the, the oratory skills of their man of God or of whoever's preaching to them. But when the power of God is there, then you know that the people's faith is resting in God and God alone. OK, this is the reason why they don't like these type of this modern ministry don't like the demonstration of the spirit. They don't want you to be too spiritual. They don't want you to have uh, any type of prophetic understanding because they know that it's going to expose their immaturity or their lack of depth of the word themselves. OK, now let me go on. Verse four says the diseased you have not strengthened. The disease, in other words, the dysfunctional. Look at look, look at how instead of delivering all of these women running all around the country, dysfunctional as the day is long, uh, uh, dysfunctional as mothers, dysfunctional as wives, uh, all types of issues and disorders, yet they're giving them conferences to constantly play on that dysfunction, never healing them, causing them to ever learn but never come to the knowledge of the truth. Th this is what the shepherds are doing now. They're playing on the dysfunction, the diseased minds of the masses that uh, can't manage their life without a life coach. So now, uh, you know, if, if, if you know, you know, a, a life coach needs you to be dysfunctional to be needed. So we that's why we have this life coach culture like the doctor feels. That's why we have everything that has a talk show feel to it, because everybody wants to be a life coach. But to be a life coach, you have to have people who can't manage their life. So what so how am I so what good am I if so what good is a life coach if the people mature and manage their life where well, then you're no longer needed. So the way they keep themselves needed is to ensure dysfunction is to not instead of growing you up, cater to instead of them growing you up and and bringing you out of your immaturity. They literally cater to and give you a conference so you can feel comfortable in your dysfunction. This is what a lot of this woman that I lose and a lot of these women weapon of power, all these conferences that they're running to, it literally just speaks to their dysfunction because the real problem, if you, if, if, if they could solve uh, uh, their problem by just telling them uh, uh, simple teachings that you need to learn Christ. You need to come out of all of that, learn Christ, get on your face, cry out to God until you get a breakthrough. You get a change, okay? But no, they want them to come and cry and cry, cry in the sanctuaries and lay out on the floor, and then on top of it, you know, give us your forty dollars registration fee, buy ten books, ten tapes. So this is what the Bible talks about: how the shepherds are fat; they're feeding themselves. They're not feeding the sheep. That's why the sheep are anemic. They're running around looking for more, but they're only but they're running to the same ministries that feed from the same well of this uh, watered down. Uh, uh, um, um, enterprise gospel, basically 
Enterprise Gospel does what's best for business, not what's best for the sheep, but what's best for business. This is the model we see, this business model. Okay, let me go on. It says, the disease you have not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick. You, you have never seen this many wounded, hurt, wounded people running around the body of Christ trying to get healed. But every time they go somewhere, the sh these, these shepherds do the same thing because because but these shepherds do the same thing and not heal them. Not by not saying that the sheep themselves don't have responsibility to forgive and and let go of the past. But at the same time. Because they're not challenging them with, with, with true with, with the word of God. They're not truly challenging them to come out to deny themselves. They're not teaching the principles of discipleship. These sheep remain hurt, remain in their bitterness, and then they do, they are the ones to end up getting a word from God, going off starting a ministry, shipwrecking a lot of other people because nobody ever convicted and challenged them they become delusional thinking that they can't sit under any teacher. And this is what's going on in the body of Christ. Look. Neither have you brought them again, brought have ye brought them again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought, neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty you have ruled them. With force and with cruelty you have ruled them. So this is the indictment that God has against against the against the shepherds with forcefulness and cruelty. They have been ruled. Okay. In other words, uh, a, a program has been created. To, to maximize the sheep, to get as much out of them without ever truly having the heart to truly heal them and truly deliver them. Look at this. And they were scattered because there was no shepherd and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. This is what has happened. Because there's no shepherd, the sheep are running everywhere. They're, they're in new age now. Some of them have gone to Islam. Every other, every beast now is, is feeding upon them. Uh, uh, Hinduism, uh, the emergent church, uh, some of them have gone back to their past life. Some of them are just now decided that they're going to go ahead and live in sin. And go ahead and live in sin and try to go to church. Now they're being fed upon by every beast of the field because these shepherds have not shepherded them, so they have been scattered. What do we have going on in the body of Christ? We have a scattering of the flock of God. They're running everywhere. People is running wild. Nobody, it's like the Bible says that men are doing what's right in their own eyes. Because the shepherds have not set them in order. Why? Because they're too busy being preachers of L.A. and preachers and pastors' wives and uh, uh, mega festing and uh, all of this uh, Hollywood minded that they're not pastoring the flock. So the flock is truly scattered. They may still go to church, but they're scattered. They're running around looking for everything, getting involved, entangled in everything, losing their houses, monies and marriages because nobody is bringing them into order. And so now they're being fed upon by every beast. Every unclean beast is now feeding upon the flock of God. Look, and they were scattered because uh, uh, women and, and listen, verse six, it says, and my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. This is this is I'm going to close with this. This is the the posture now of God's people. They are now uh, 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 they are now. Uh, become they they are now have a spirit of the vagabond okay there's a spirit called the vagabond spirit and the vagabond spirit is the spirit of wandering in other words it's the same spirit that homeless people have or hobos or people who uh, uh drop out of society they wander to and fro this is the spirit upon the body of christ a wandering spirit where they wander over here a little while and then they don't they because they have no root of stability or no true foundation because the shepherds they was underfed themselves and didn't feed them they wander over here for a little while then they get fed up over there they get tired they wander over here and for before you know it these, these sheep have been in the body of christ 15 20 25 years wandering around and nobody has ever been able to deal with them because but because now they have this vagabond spirit and that's what you see why you don't see loyalty anymore people come to a church stay for six months if you don't promote them to the highest office then they're ready to, they're ready to leave there's no loyalty uh, a pastor go out of town for a vacation he come back his church is taking over because there's no loyalty why because most of these people are wanderers they wander here they blown to and fro by the wind of every doctrine and uh and, and they always run into the excitement trying to find a way to climb up another way to get inside a person's ministry get up in leadership because they were never taught properly 
And but as bad as that is, the the blame that God is laying, the indictment that God is laying is against the people who are supposed to teach these sheep. Now, let me say one more thing. I know we as pastors, we do make mistakes. We make many mistakes. I've made my own mistakes as a pastor. So I'm not I, I'm, I'm not saying that we're perfect and we're not going to make those mistakes and, and that we're not going to, 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 at times, offend people. Yes, we will, because we are human. Jesus offended people, so people will get offended. But my point is when we make a lifestyle, make a, a habit of caring more for us than we do for the sheep, caring more for us than we do for preaching the truth. It's not even necessarily caring for the sheep. It's preaching the truth. It's telling the sheep the truth. If you tell them the truth, they can decide whether they want to follow you or not. They can decide whether they want to hear it. But our job is to tell them the truth. So I admonish you, you sheep that's out there, if you're wandering, if you have that vagabond spirit, I pray that the Lord Jesus break that off of you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you find stability and I pray that you find a, a place to put your roots down. Right now, we bind up the spirit of unforgiveness for every pastor and man of God, a minister that has hurt you, that has wounded you, or that's played with you, that has used you. I pray right now that the that the power of forgiveness rest upon you right now and you're able to release that and, 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 and that that poison of bitterness runs out of you right now, just flows, just melts out of you now and you begin to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that will enable you to do the work of the Lord. Father, I ask you lead and guide every vagabond sheep, every vagabond, every person with this vagabond spirit that's running around the body of Christ, lead them to good shepherds that will love them, that will deal with them, that will set them down and talk to them, will counsel them and bring them out, that will preach truth to them and bring conviction to their lives so that the enemy won't destroy and continue and they continue to become a uh, uh, food for the unclean beast. Lord God, I thank you for I, I, I thank you for what you for setting people free right now from that spirit. Father, we give you all the praise, glory and honor in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you uh, for uh, listening to this DTV vlog today. Uh, like I said, comment, uh, support this ministry. You can click down below, support this ministry and, uh, uh, you know, comment. Give me your feedback. I would love to I would love to um, I would love to uh, correspond with you. Amen. Until next time, uh, be blessed.